was Sonny and Cher back in 1971, and now it's 30 years later. 31 years later, Cher is better than ever, and her fantastic new CD is called Living Proof, and she is living proof that any dream is possible. Take a look. She was born Sherilyn Sharkeesian to a 17-year-old mother and a truck-driving father who abandoned their family when Cher was barely a few months old. She was sent to a Catholic home and raised there until her mother could save enough money to support her. Cher and her younger sister grew up around Hollywood while their mother, a struggling actress, looked for work. And it wasn't until Cher was 11 years old that she finally met her father for the first time. By the time she was 16, Cher met and fell in love with 28-year-old producer-songwriter Sonny Bono. They married two years later and literally made beautiful music together. Their number one single, I Got You Babe, became a smash hit, and it wasn't long before the whole country was in love with them and their music. Their Sonny and Cher TV show was a huge success, establishing Cher as both a comedic actress and a singing sensation. Their daughter, Chastity, soon got in on the act. But while Sonny and Cher's career soared into the stratosphere, their relationship crashed and burned, ending in divorce after 11 years of marriage. Though they went their separate ways, they remained close friends throughout the years. Cher says the worst day of her life was the day Sonny died suddenly in a skiing accident. When I was young, there was this section in the Reader's Digest, and it was called the most unforgettable character I've ever met. <laughs> And for me, that person is Sonny Bono. And no matter how long I live or who I meet in my life, that person will always be son for me. Are you okay? Okay. And you say and have said that losing Sonny was, for you, the first real loss. Yeah. Toughest thing. I'd read in your book that you'd said that Leaving him, you thought was a you thought always was was the hardest, <laughs> yes. but losing him turned out to be the hardest. Yeah. yeah, okay. And so, still now, hard to is it is it like I hear this from people who've lost loved ones. They say sometimes you just you want to call them or you want to you know you forget that they're not here, or has the realization. You know, you know what's so weird? I have like I was talking to Chas the other day, and we have dreams about him. Mm -hmm. And I had one dream after, right after he died, and it was, I've never had a dream like this at all. I was, um, in my dream, I saw him, and it was like sitting here seeing you. And he, he didn't talk, though, and I would, kept talking to him, and, and, and he wouldn't talk back to me. And then all of a sudden, he turned, and he smiled, and it was like, it was like the most real thing that has ever happened in a dream. And then he smiled, and I thought, okay, well, it's fine. And then the dream was over. And you wa walked away from it or got up from it feeling what? I felt what? completely different after that dream. I just felt different. About his passing? Yeah. Uh-huh. Because I was never, I've never been close to anyone. Since then or other than him? Other than him. Other than him. Was as close as you'd ever been? Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, I've had relatives die. My father died. It wasn't the same thing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I always think that... Um, the passing of another person, really, and I, we all experience this uh, during September 11th, um, teaches you about your own life, or it strengthens something in your own life, or I think some forces 